Well, hello everyone. Thank you for clicking on the video. It is Q&A time. Hooray! Breaking it out again this week into two parts. Part one will be the sports version. So if you ask some questions on Twitter, I may be able to answer them here. Next one that will come up a little bit later behind this will be the Ask Jeff Q&A where we talk about politics and uh, just kind of real world related questions and basically anything non-sports related. So if you're interested in that or ask some questions for that one, tune into that session and we'll see if your question gets answered or see how I can make you rage, even though I really wouldn't even say anything that's necessarily all that controversial. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, first question here is, I believe from Vinny, is if NBA and MLB expanded to 32 teams, what city should they choose? Uh, the smart ass in me says, oh, the NBA wants to expand to 32 teams? How about they put a team in Madison Square Garden <laughs> in the United Center? <laughs> um, I would say for basketball purposes, what would you probably say somewhere like Vegas? Yeah, maybe. Seattle, I'm sure, is going to come up, but they didn't keep the team before. Why should they get another one now? I would think, I would assume that those would be the two that would most likely come up for the NBA. And for MLB, it's probably Vegas again. And maybe it's a place like Portland. Like, I think part of it depends on you know trying to get into uh, as large of a media market as you can, even though the vast majority of media markets, larger media markets already have one or several pro sports teams. I think NBA could also potentially look at St. Louis, even though it was there many, many moons ago with the Hawks. Um, but MLB, it's probably you'll probably hear cities such as like Portland or uh, San Antonio, um, you know, some of those places. Uh, Chase Oliver sixty eight asks, with Mamba Week coming up next week, I was wondering what are your favorite Kobe Bryant moments? Um, in terms of pure favorites, like the ones that I was remember the most or respect them the most for, um, two thousand. Game 7, Western Conference Finals, when they came storming back against that kind of super team Portland Trailblazers group. And it's under a minute to go. The Lakers have a little bit of a lead. And then Kobe hits Pippen with that sick crossover, and he's coming down the lane. And all of a sudden, you I always, I always remember, even 20 years later, Costas is called, Kobe to Shaq! Like, that was the moment right there where you knew that dynasty had arrived. Like... That is something that even two decades later still sticks in my mind. Like, I still feel it in the cockles of my soul. And frankly, it still admittedly gives me goosebumps to think about it, even thinking about Costas' call. Like, that whole Game 7 was a tremendous, tremendous comeback and like a dynasty-defining moment for that team. So I, I think back on that one with fond memories of even not being a Lakers fan and being jealous of, hey, now Phil's over here and he's going to win a bunch of titles. Um, you know, just thinking about that, like, that's cool. It was, it was, it's cool to think about all those years later. Like, that's that's a big Mamba moment to me. And then, frankly, 2008, the Redeem team. I, I don't give a crap what anybody else says. The number one reason that team won the gold medal in 2008 was Kobe Bryant, period. And you think about it, he wasn't there in 2004 because of the kind of follow-up to what happened with the allegations. But it was 2008. Like, this is the U.S. coming off of that stupid bronze medal um, in Athens. Thanks, Starberry. <clears throat> but when Kobe was there, like, the Mamba was there. You knew that vengeance would be had. And that the USA would win the gold medal. And go back to doing it how it should be. When it comes to basketball, we dominate. We are the ugly Americans and everybody else is our bitch. Like anything else that happens when it comes to basketball is totally and completely unacceptable. Sure, we get our asses kicked in soccer and other sports. Who cares? Hockey, who cares? Basketball, though, that can never, ever happen again. That is the peak of definition of embarrassing. So that's the other big moment to me that really stands out is... Kobe being that dude, and, and make no mistake about it, even on a team with LeBron and Wade and so many other guys, it was Kobe's team. He was that dude. And then probably the last moment was, you know, the 60-point game, his, his last game as a pro, like, 
actually sitting down and watching that because you just in the back of my mind just had that feeling like this is Kobe Bryant's last game ever in his career. You're gonna something's gonna happen, and you don't want to miss it. And this is a bad Lakers team playing for nothing. And, and just watching him as the second half happened and he started to come to life and you see his old body, he's trying to get across the finish line one more time. Like Those are the three things that really, really stand out to me. Uh, Best Buy Rick, the Spurs 22-year playoff streak is coming to an end. It has come to an end. And I just wanted to ask what your thoughts are on it and the franchise. Also, how was the world for you the last time they missed the playoffs? I was a freshman in high school. Only the fifth time in franchise history they missed the playoffs. Uh, so I guess we were pretty close in age. I was a sophomore in high school. And then, of course, getting ready to go into junior year. Uh, that was a long, long time ago. So what did, what did the world look like back then? Back in 1997. Uh, golly. Back then, I I won the... Uh, it was a long, long time ago. So you believe me if you want or not. I, I don't make up this crap. I won the Fresh Soft Conference 2 Mile in track. Um Again, yeah, long, long time ago. 1046. Yeah, it was my time back then. And again, I was a little shrimp and all of like 16 years old, so forgive me there. Uh, yeah, other times, other other things associated with that time aren't exactly the best. But um, you know, obviously, yeah, I was very big on the Bulls, and the Bulls were running rough shot over the league and dominating, so life was good there. Uh, the Bears were aggravating and annoying. They had just recently made the trade for Rick Meyer. And you just knew that that was going to be a colossal flop. Um, that's what it was. Uh, thoughts on the franchise? Like being able to make the playoffs for that many years in a row? You know, a few years back, we had the Jazz had that two decade or so long streak that came to an end. Uh, the difference here is San Antonio is much more impressive because they won five titles during that stretch. Uh, it's an incredible stretch of consistency and excellence, and in some cases, domination. Uh, Storm 2817, do the Bulls and the Kings have any long-term hopes after the firing of Jim Boylan and Vladi Divac? Um, I, show you, I guess you have hope. Long-term, though, like for the Bulls, Reinsdorf's still the owner, so why would you have long-term hope? And for the Kings, unfortunately, they're in Sacramento. Like, do you really envision them being the next dynasty? I'm just saying. It's the Kings, for God's sakes. Uh, Mags, the NFL nerd, asked, which NFL coaches are on the hot seat for 2020? Uh, Adam Gase has to be one, doesn't he? I, I would certainly think so. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think through in my mind, so give me just a second here. Uh, so Adam Gase is on the hot seat. Uh, Stefanski, since he's coaching in Cleveland, is a perpetual hot seat because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, Doug Marone still how some still how still somehow miraculously has a job, so he has to be on the hot seat. Um, Bill O'Brien isn't, but he should be. Uh, sorry, I can't think of all of them. I don't want to eat up the rest of the video. Um, what I will say is there are several. I'm sorry, but Bears fans, if the Bears don't make the playoffs this year, Matt Nagy's seat should be hot, and he should be shown the door. Matt Patricia certainly has to be on the hot seat. His seat should be damn near nuclear at this point. I'm sure there are others too that I'm just omitting at the moment, but those are some of the ones that are notable. At Keys 10 asks, what fired black NFL coaches will get another head coaching job? And you throw out names like Hugh Jackson and Marvin Lewis and Vance Joseph. You could have thrown out guys like Todd Bowles and et cetera. Um, out of those three guys that you listed, I would have also maybe thrown in Jim Caldwell into the list. Out of those three guys that you listed, uh, by far, Marvin Lewis would have the inside track. He would by far have the inside track. And he would be the one that would be most likely. If he wanted an opportunity, I don't think he'd have much of a trouble finding a job in the NFL. As a head coach, he might even, again, have some personnel power similar to what he did in Cincinnati. Um, so he, he would be the one. I, I would certainly believe that. Uh, at a wiggy zero 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 thoughts on the Knicks hiring Thibodeau. <laughs> R.I.P. R.J. Barrett's knee. <laughs> I remember the T-Wolves fans were so giddy and giggly tits about Tibbs. Oh my God, we got Tibbs and a whole bunch of nothing happened. How'd that work out for you? Knicks fans, you'll find out. Give it time. You'll find out. Give it time.
You'll find out. Give it time. Next question, Gengar Slav. I know you're a Cubs fan, but your thoughts on Luis Robert or Robert or whatever. Um, show, shows you how little I'm paying attention right now to baseball or sports in general. Uh, another one of the young kids on the south side. Um, admittedly, I'm going to reserve a lot of judgment on him because I just haven't watched a whole lot of White Sox baseball, which I, I just don't do. Um, so I haven't been able to check him out much and be able to say, like, he's somebody that's going to be a future star or anything like that. And frankly, if I was going to watch the Sox to see anybody in terms of their young kids, it's going to be Eloy. Because he should be a Cub still. But he's not. But he should be. But he's not. All because of the freaking Quintana trade. Oh, God. <laughs> um, at James Izzy 15 preseason thoughts on the Steelers. Nice try. Not giving them to you now. When I do the team-by-team -team previews at the beginning of September, that's when you'll find out. How about that? Electro Juju asks, what are your thoughts on the NFL playoffs expanding to 14 teams? 14 teams, still less than half the league. Gives you incentive potentially to put even more importance on getting the top overall seed. Uh, you get two more markets potentially into the playoffs. You get... Just to me, more benefit out of it. You get two more games. Like, why would you not do it? And if you say, well, you know, it might allow a mediocre team into the playoffs. Well, most all the sports do that. But the good thing about football, as much as any other sport, is that it is only one game at a time, come playoff time, is that those seven seeds could beat some of the two seeds. It can happen. And I look forward to when it will happen because you know it will. Dan Osawa asks, how long would the Blackhawks having lean years be acceptable? I'm probably good for at least a decade, realistically. Sure, we'd like to see them win another cup or two, but if they don't, like, it's great to have expectations and standards, but let's, let's keep our balance here a little bit. But if they have some lean years and they struggle, that is okay. <laughs> they, they've won their cups. I've seen them win the cups. You know, so I'm okay for right now. Uh, Kranich Gaming asks, how do you think Cam Newton will perform with the Patriots? Fascinating question. I'm really curious to see how McDaniel structured that system around him in Carolina. Curious to see how uh, he interacts, Cam that is, with Belichick. How will the hoodie interact with him? Is he even going to be the starter? Like all this question about how he will perform. Like, is there a potential that they give the job to Jared Stidham to start off the year? That is certainly possible. Um, I think if he does play, like there could be some growing pains and some adjustment. I have some concerns about how he is from a health standpoint, especially with his arm, his shoulder. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me for Cam to have a comeback player of the year type of year playing in New England either. And that team still win double-digit games. Alwyn Tuda asks, would love to hear you cover UFC. Any particular reasons as to why you don't watch? Uh, way, way, way back, I think it was like 2011, I tried giving UFC a shot for a little bit and even did some videos on the old uh, wrestling channel. Um, but I just wasn't feeling it. As much as wrestling fans can annoy me, like MMA fans are a whole level, other level of annoying nerd, real, realistically. Um, just wasn't my jam. You know, like, why, why fake it? Why pretend? Well, I have yet another thing that you have to watch once a month on a Saturday night. I'm good. I'm good. You know, people appreciate it. People enjoy it. That's fine. But you're not going to find me be want to be an MMA tough guy. It's just not happening. So anyways, that's it for this Q&A. Thanks to everyone again for submitting your questions. I uh, hope you enjoyed and stay tuned soon. You'll see the Ask Jeff Q&A where we're talking about politics and everything else in the real world. Later.